This is Tawana Freeman with the Black Life Coaches Network, and I am so glad you can join us today. You know, this is a super hot topic, and I had to reach into our uh, network and bring out the best of the best when it comes to extramarital affairs, marriages, recovering from affairs. I tell you, today I have with us Coach Martez Layton. Welcome, Martez. How are you today? Hi, Tawana. How are you doing today? You know, I'm fantastic. Let me tell you, let me give you um, our audience a little background. Not only is Coach Martez an expert at this, he is also known as the affair doctor. That's it. I don't think I really need to say much more, but he is qualified to respond. More importantly, he actually is the author of a book called A Blessed Affair. So we will make sure we provide all that information to you at the end of this video. But right now, I want to get into what the hot topic is. And so many yeah. of us have watched the new television series on the OWN Network that Iyanla Van Zandt is actually um, doing, and it's called Fix My Life. And mm -hmm. most recently, um, everyone was abuzz because she had on her show a – a married couple who had basically caught the, have found themselves in a very uh, twisted situation where the woman um, husband was cheating. He had not just one affair, but he had over 20 different affairs. Um, Coach Martez, I brought you in because I would like you to respond to one thing that I noticed in the video or the, the television show with the Yanla, and that was, when Iyanla said to the pastor or the cheating husband, she said these words, why would a woman as sweet as she is want to be with a man who has been, and you can fill in the blanks, so unfaithful, so uncaring, so disconnected, it, it, the list can go on. But the question in my mind was a perfect opportunity for him to respond. And so, Coach Martez, in your experience, when you work with your clients who have been in a situation such as this, maybe not as extreme, but been in a situation where you need to intervene and a question is posed about why would this woman want to stay with you, isn't that an opportunity for the man or the the um, the person to respond, to give uh, some type of support or, or or some some justification of any sort. All right, so now it's it's on you. Let's tell me what you think. <laughs> well, definitely. Um, that was a great question, and when I heard the question, I was really shocked myself that um, that he did respond because he could have also validated. Um, his love for his wife and the reason why she should stay with him. Um, when I was in that situation, of course, with me and my wife, may not have been as extreme, but one of the things that I would have answered to that question is one of the reasons that she wants to stay with me is because, first of all, we have a destiny together. Mm. We have a purpose together in our marriage to impact other people's lives. And so, is more than just what I did, but understanding what was the root and where did it come from. So I definitely uh, disagree with him not answering it, but I think that that's one of the chances that he had to really share his deep remorse. Um, God's grace as being a pastor. He's preached to people for years about understanding God's grace, understanding God's forgiveness, understanding God's grace and God's mercy. And that was a great opportunity for him to put in perspective for his wife to understand now as a pastor been leading people. Now I need the person that I love the most to show me grace and mercy. Oof, that was powerful. You know, Coach Martinez, you're right on point. Because he is a man of God, because he understands scriptures, yes, he could have used that as a ministering opportunity to speak from his heart to his wife. You mentioned something that was super, super important, and, and you said that he needed to validate her. Is there an opportunity for him to validate her? Or should he, you know, I, I don't know. Is it something that he should have done Great to question. say... Yeah, where, where's the? I'm concerned that I don't understand if he was in position to do that. 
Okay. No, that's a great question. And you know, Tawana, I've been there. And the reason why I say it's so important to validate is because once infidelity comes, the white feels there's a feeling of insecurity, there's a feeling of I'm not good enough, there's a feeling of what could I could have done differently to prevent you, and especially with him having numerous affairs, it's almost like what makes these women better than me? And so what happens is in his validating, he's validating that, you know, you are the love of my life. It was not on you. This was something that I had in my life that was a void that I needed to deal with. So he's validating her to help her to know you have a right to be secure. You have a right to hold your head up high because you've been an amazing wife. And so that's what I meant by as far as validating her that she is still beautiful because she feels like I've married you but you don't even see me being sexual appealing or anything. Oh that's so true that's an excellent point. I, <laughs> let me give you a clap <laughs> I want to clap for you on that no because this is what a lot of um, viewers are saying. They were saying that Iyanla um, kind of led the show to where the woman was going to leave the husband because that's what Ilana intended in the beginning because she believed that he right. did not deserve her and therefore as the right. coach, Iyanla basically led her down the path of self-discovery, you know, self-awareness right. you don't need this mess, right. move on. And so right. the opposing right. view was, hey, whatever happened to your vows, whatever happened to us, wow. the forgiveness, yes. what about grace, like you said, at the yes. end of the day, yes, it is about what the woman is capable of handling. Is she yes. capable of being mm -hmm. in a place where mm -hmm. she can forgive and move on? Mm -hmm. Is she in mm -hmm. that place? And so it would have been a great mm -hmm. opportunity for Iyanla yes. not to just say you sold yourself for a hat in a parking lot, a parking spot, or whatever she kept saying, right. but she could right. have said a little <laughs> bit, right, she could have, she could have mentioned to her that how much love do you have for this man you know yes. why mm -hmm. were you with him in the first place not talking about the hat mm -hmm. talking about the man that you married right. one of the things that actually concerned me too which which is a whole other perspective when he talked about what he went through between the ages of four and seven talking about that penetration see I understand that people want to paint him as a sexual monster for what he did with those different women. But can you even imagine the courage, the strength, and everything it took between the ages of four and seven to have your sexual abuser, abuser still a part of your family and looking at you? It's like that took so much. And so really I felt sorry for him because I knew that how painful that had been to have to go through that, you know, and so, you know, it's something I had put on Facebook. I said, you know, you always want to look at the root instead of looking at the fruit of a thing. And so when you look at that root, this was a, this was this was serious, Tawana. This yeah. this was serious. It was, it was, and it. it yeah. I felt sorry yeah. for him as well. Lanya did a fantastic job of moving them forward, mm -hmm. but I think the missing mm -hmm. piece again was looking, as you said, at a at the root of the thing a little bit more. Right. When he introduced right. the tragedies from his his childhood. Yeah. That was just yeah. a small segment of something that was much greater, and whether yeah. his wife had knowledge of that abuse when he was a child or not, I think it was still mm -hmm. necessary. And I know it's television, mm -hmm. you can't go and see everything. But I think it's still mm -hmm. worth having people here and I, who is watching this video mm -hmm. right now between you and I to understand that you cannot make a permanent decision off of a temporary yeah. emotion. That was a yeah. very, very big decision yeah. to leave your husband yeah, well. without having a full yeah. story. And that's why we have yeah. coaches like Martez who are experts <laughs> at affairs who understand how to do the work. Yeah. You want to talk about doing the work. Right. You need to know yeah. people who have experienced it and who know yeah. what it is that you need to do yeah. to get over that yeah. stuff. Oh, it was yeah. powerful. No. So, so powerful. No, that's powerful, Tawana, because what you just said is so true. Uh, my wife and I both were saying that because this wife 
also had an affair. So now she's hurt. So now she's going to leave the husband. She really needs some guidance. You know, she needs to know how to navigate back to a healthy place along with him also. But when we looked at that, it was almost like they were opened up at the surgical table and then pretty much <laughs> Ilana walked out of the emergency room. Oh, and, you yeah. know, so it's like, you know, nobody really is there to do the sewing back up. And so I'm just hoping that, you know, they're going to put her in connection with someone to help her to come back to a healthy place because she's very broken. Absolutely. And if she's watching, she needs yeah. to call you, Coach Martez, because at the end, <laughs> no, I'm serious. At the end of the day, no, that's you, what my wife she, said. well, yeah, because you, she can repeat this behavior. Something will be repeated yeah. because what ends up happening, she, com- oh, she yeah, had an yeah, affair. Yeah. She had an affair. That part wasn't mm-hmm. mentioned, but one time mm-hmm. it was slid in there right. real quick. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Right. She had an affair. She had an affair for a reason. Whether she was pushed to the affair or not, that I don't want to even get into that. Mm-hmm. But what needs to be dealt with is the fact that she right. did have an affair for a reason. And that needs to be dealt yeah. with before she yeah. enters in a new relationship with anyone else. Even if she right. can, you know, continues yeah. in this path, it's critical that her children yeah. be healed from the circumstances mm-hmm. well. Because those three yes. kids, as beautiful yes. as they are, they have seen and heard yes. and will continue to hear the tragedy of this story as yes. they grow up. Yes. I want people to understand where this is not a criticism for Iyanla. This is not a criticism at all because she only has 45 good minutes to communicate the right. truth and do yes. as much as she can in that short period of time. And there's a lot that happens, you know, that you know, is cut away and ends up on the, the, the editing room floor. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. Iyanla, you did a fantastic job. The what we want to oh, do no, here, did a great job. yeah, we're just here to in to fill in a gap to help people who are in this situation, help to guide them on what are some steps that you can take. So Coach Martez, kind of walk us through. So we're going to pretend as if this is a, you know, we're first now, you know, first time hearing this. We need some help. So you have another viewer who's saying, I need you to fix my life, Coach Martez. What are some of the natural steps that they can take to transition, begin the process of healing as they are on this path of renewal? Well, one of the first things I would recommend is definitely trying to sit down with someone that is a specialist in that area of healing from infidelity. And what I tell people here, even in the local area, um, if you can't get into or for some reason you can't afford financially the one-on-one coaching, you definitely want to get into a group setting because you definitely need to place yourself in a position where you are hearing some positive feedback for all the negative thoughts and the negative feedback that you are being fed to yourself internally. That's the first thing you want to do because you need some help to combat all the negativity that's in your head. Remember, infidelity is an emotional pain. So to deal with that emotional pain, you have to be able to deal with the mental thoughts and what you're hearing that's going on in your head. So that's the first thing you want to do. Um, to Wanda. The second thing you want to do is you want to set yourself onto a path of daily forgiveness. And let me say that again. Daily forgiveness. When you are trying to recover from infidelity and that hurt, you have to allow your heart to be willing to forgive daily because I promise you There are going to be times throughout the day where if you don't forgive, you're going to keep going back, keep going back over and over, repeating the cycle of of anger. And so that's another thing that you want to do. That's a practical step also. And then you want to paint the big picture. You know, this is one of the questions that I ask all clients. If we take the infidelity out of your marriage, does this marriage still end up being a successful marriage? You know, and if we can take that out and then we paint the big picture of what the marriage would have looked like if the infidelity wouldn't have happened, then what that tells me is this. 
the marriage can still look like that, even recovering from infidelity. Absolutely. That's, that's pretty good. That's po- that's a, that is a powerful point, right? You really got to work through it. And it is a daily walk. Yes. And, I, and I appreciate yes. everything that you have said. And I know you have helped some people that are watching. I know you oh, have. Definitely. So are there any closing yeah. remarks? You know, one of the things that I said, and, and which my wife and I always say, you know, having an affair does not have to destroy your marriage. It actually can actually cause your marriage to actually grow. For some people, this infidelity may be a sign to end the marriage, but for others, this could be just the greatest test that you ever want to face. So don't look at the infidelity as something that your spouse did against you. Really look at what was the cause of the infidelity. And when you both can take a real good look at responsibility and really see what caused this, then you make the decision after that to determine how do we move forward. But just the old saying, if you ever cheat on me, is over. I'm sorry, everyone. That needs to go out the door because there are so many other factors involved that you got to look at preventing. You got to look at other things, other healthy things to have in place so that doesn't have to come into place. So you won't end up being a woman that throws away the best thing that God brought into your life to only give it to someone else. Mm, that's powerful. And, you know, Coach, I got to say one more thing. I thought we were going to close, but this is something that's super <laughs> important. When you said that, you know, if you ever cheat on me, that's the end of the marriage. That is the one caveat that so many people right. have dangling at the end of their vows. It is. It is yeah. a constant reminder right. that if you do that, then I will. If if we right. would step back for just a, a minute and just, as you say, wow. assess the situation before we make a decision, and that would include shutting the door to the external conversations. There are a lot of yeah. friends and family members in our lives that will make the matter worse because they are constantly yes, giving input and making opinions about your life, not about yes. other people and how and how they yes. live their family life. It's your family. Yes. And if those friends yes. and those loved ones care for you as much as they say they do, they will give you room to make that decision with no judgment and let you make that decision to stay or go and be supportive either way, either way. Yeah. So I, I yeah. need, I want, I'm gonna throw that little one in there in the end because I'm telling you, friends and family have a way of breaking more marriages yeah. up, even in the end. Yeah. You know that's true. Also, the simple fact that this was a pastor is also another thing that burdened my heart because of the fact when I was there and I actually had cheated on my wife and being actively involved in church, I was afraid to tell anyone in ministry. I was afraid to tell anyone in the church. And that's something that I really am trying to get out to the body of Christ. That's why we need professional coaches, professional counselors, so that you can come and get this off of your chest because God is going to forgive you. He's going to show grace to you, but the longer you keep it inside without sharing with anyone, the worse it's going to be. Absolutely. That is a great way to close this out. Thank you, Coach Martez. I I am so grateful for you and your ministry and the work that you do as the affair doctor. It is greatly needed. We both know that marriages are suffering all across this country. We have a number of issues, high profile, you know, affairs and and just the average common day folk just like me and you who are going through. So it is good to know that you are out here here. It's good to know that you and your yeah. wife have a testimony yeah. of victory, a victorious testimony and an overcoming yeah. story so that people know yeah. it is possible. But you got to do the work. Yeah. As Yolanda said, you got to put the work in. So you got to put the work in. That's right. Thank you so much, Martez.